Miles Davis, you know, Sketches of Spain, which my first encounter with some kind of essence of flamenco, uh, and I knew and understood what he was doing. It was nice to be able to flex some muscles with these cats, you know, and play with that kind of modalities, you know? And it's uh, nice. Fits right in. Uh, I remember the first couple of gigs I did with Cigar and Jose. Like the whole family, grandmothers, kids, everybody would come. To They're all in the dressing room and they're all looking at me going like, who is this guy? What is he doing here, you know? And I just calm, cool, you know? When I start to play, they all break out with smiles and they go, Coño, esa trompetica mola. <laughs> so I, I, I had their hearts right away and it was nice to be accepted, you know, into that. It's a pretty close society, you know what I mean? They don't like too many outsiders in there and uh, I've been welcomed like a brother. <laughs> Y 
Colombia y hay vientecillo Doble, doble y me desplaza I was, in, I was there, I watched it from the street four blocks away from the Twin Towers. I watched it go down. It was uh, quite amazing. Um, but now they're using that as an excuse to mess with the rest of the planet, you know? It's just like they did with Iraq, you know? Uh, when I came to Spain, it was a lot more relaxed. I was able to, like, not have to, not have to be, you know, with my third eye on, you know, making sure that the police weren't around to mess with me, you know? Somehow, they, they like to mess with me. <laughs> I guess it's the way I look or whatever, the way I walk with, uh, you know. So it's, it, it helped to take that stress off, staying in Spain. Um, in Spain, I've had a lot of opportunity to do things that I can't do in New York, just because just because, you know, I guess I'm famous here, you know? <laughs> if people give me a little respect and, uh, and let me voice something and they pay attention, you know? Siempre por lo, siempre por lo I 
left New York. I said, man, I can't stand this shit, man. I went to Spain, man. I found another opportunity to, to express, man. And then it was like a, a doing some research on ancestral connections, you know. Um, I found out a great grandfather was from Asturias. And uh, on my mother's side, he went to Puerto Rico. And then when the war for independence of Cuba broke out, he joined the uh, Cuban Constitutional Army and he became Antonio Maceo's right-hand man. And that's, the, that's the, the big leader of the generals in that war, you know? And uh, I was pretty proud to find that out, you know? Uh, uh, I'm just going where I feel comfortable, but I'm not in exile. Uh, I think wherever I, I go, I'm gonna start some, some kind of stuff, you know? Everybody had their own sound because nobody had anything to imitate, you know? You know? They'd listen on the radio, hear something, you know, catch somebody that's important. But now there's so much, I mean, people don't even know what they want to sound like, you know? Um, well, I mean, I remember what Jackie McLean said once, he says, we're gourmets, you know. We won't eat McDonald's. <laughs> Remember that, you know, uh, Jackie McLean on Mars, that little film. Is. Um, I think what um, a lot of people have to do is really recognize who are really the great musicians and eliminate all the rest of the stuff that are. Um, derivatives, you know. It's like if somebody's gonna learn something about guitar, would he go to Kenny Burrell, West Montgomery, or Robin Ford? It's a choice. <laughs>
de la vida como en la copa divina amor es dado un hombre y nació solo un hombre por una mujer y estoy sonado contigo y en mente testigo de tu frenesí por más que se ponga el destino
remember once being in the Club Baron in Harlem, and I was standing across from the bar, and Louis Armstrong, Dizzy Gillespie, and Miles Davis were at the bar, all three of them together, cracking jokes, and, and, and you know, uh, and I saw something that, that is, is really rare, and I wish I had a camera for that moment. You know? I mean, when I was 18, I played with Dizzy, you know? And he didn't even know I played trumpet, you know? I was playing conga drums with him. And when he found out I played trumpet, he started showing me some stuff with the shim sham shimmy and, and messing with the valves and the alternative valves, you know? But he always would try to make me play on stage, man, and I would tell him, no, man. I'd rather sit there and play the drum and take a lesson. I'll, I'll let you know when I'm ready, you know? Um, but, uh, you know, it was awesome to be playing congas behind them, you know? And, uh, and he comes, come on, play it. And I go, oh, man, no, man, not yet. Not yet, I ain't ready for this, you know? Maybe maybe 10 years or 15 years later, I had the Fort Apache band. I said, Dizzy, go, come on and play with me, man, you know? And we would we would do like some shows in Boston and in, uh, in uh, different cities, you know, what, DC. What, what lets you know that you are ready? Uh, how does it happen? Eloquence, the ability to say what you want to say. I wasn't sure yet. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
if they pull him out, if they catch Bin Laden just before the elections and Bush wins because of that, then you know the shit's a setup. You know the shit's a setup. So, what can I say? I don't want to talk no more politics because they might hang my ass. <laughs> but I get involved, you know, because it, it fucks with my, my, my environment, man. You know? You know, no place to play. You know, nobody wants to pay no money. You know, uh, uh, can't smoke a cigarette, can't fart, can't walk, can't talk, you know. Uh. sur mes